On this webcast with Debbie Weil, we're going to dissect her website and help her get more authority and more relevance for her keywords. Let's go. So hi everybody, this is Antoine DuPont with Catapult Marketing and this is webcast, I have no idea how many numbers is that. I think it's webcast number 11 and today I have Debbie Weil with me. Hi Debbie, how are you? Hi Antoine. So Debbie, um, please introduce yourself to the millions of people, well actually for the dozens of people, right? We're going to start with that, who will be watching this video uh, in the coming weeks and whatnot. Just tell, um, tell the, uh, the viewers who you are, uh, what you do, and why do you get up in the morning? Ah. <laughs> uh, well again, my name is Debbie Weil. Uh, I help writers get unstuck. Mm. And um, specifically, I work with nonfiction writers to take them, you know, over the mountain from an idea for a book to the book. Uh, I also have a little company, Boxy Media, that can help them publish, um, I like a hybrid pub publisher that can help them publish both in print and digital. Uh, and as for where I come to this, uh, I'm a, a published author. I wrote one of the first. Uh, books about business blogging with Penguin Portfolio, a mm -hmm. big New York publisher. And um, I'm a speaker on the topic of reinvention, you know, reinventing mm. your life, which could mean changing your career or changing mm. your whole life, uh, which I've done in the last four or five years mm -hmm. um, with, my, with my husband. So reinventing sort of after 60, say, which is interesting to a lot of people. Yeah, Unless for sure. Calls. There's quite a few um, baby boomers out there. Oh, we are. There are so many of us. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's good. You know, I help writers get unstuck. I Very think cool. um, so many of us, you know, we get the idea and then we just never get the ball rolling. The ball Very rolling. And I've worked with hundreds, thousands of, um, well, through my newsletter, thousands mm -hmm. of people over. It's I've had a newsletter for close to 15 years mm, so you've been at this for a while now huh I've been at this, i'm an absolute internet pioneer it's weird way way before my children <laughs> way before <laughs> very my cool yeah okay. yeah so, that's um, very cool well thank you so, so much that's my, yeah that's my passion where do i get i get up in the morning to um help writers get unstuck very cool Okay, cool. Well, that makes sense because that's what your website says. So how do I know Debbie? So Debbie and I uh, actually met each other at uh, Heroic Public Speaking, which is a course to uh, transform the world one speech at a time. It's a, basically a public speaking course, in my opinion, uh, the best one there is in uh, North America and beyond. And um, Debbie was there. Actually, you were a fellow, I believe. You were not a uh, an attendee like I was. You were a little step above, which means that you had done this work uh, once before. Uh, so you, you had a little bit of expertise, and this is how we connected. I got to see Debbie crafting and rehearsing uh, the speech of reinventing herself, and I got to see that evolving, and it's an amazing process to, uh, to see that. So this is how we, uh, we know each other. And uh, Debbie just recently posted uh, a brand new website that you actually are seeing right there on Facebook and asked for some feedback. So I couldn't help myself because I'm an internet marketer and I saw it and I says, hey, you know, I'm seeing a couple of things that could improve your website. Would you be willing to do a webcast? So this is what this webcast is about today. Today, we're going to dissect Debbie's website and we're going to be looking for uh, the things that she could do to improve to mm -hmm. have people find you on Google. That's really the key, right? Is, is how people are looking for, they're stuck in writing their, their, their book or, and they need you and we need to connect the dots right um and we need we need your phone to ring we need to have you having a waiting list of people waiting to get unstuck and right now for the vast majority of us that's not the case we could have more business so let's do that so the first thing i want to do debbie you ready by the way you ready for oh i'm ready i am so ready all right so the i've been ready for months <laughs> <laughs> cool so the first thing i do as an internet marketer the first thing i do when i look at a website i put my mouse over the Windows tab. It's called the website title. It's the Windows tab. You see each website 
has a, uh, a tab. And when I put my mouse over the tab, it actually tells me what is the website title, what's the Windows title. And that is one of the most important thing for Google because this is what it looks at to index your website. So think about indexing little cards in a box, right? It index your website and it's looking at that and it says, okay, out of what you're telling me in that tab, I'm going to be sorting your website. I'm going to put it in the box. And right now what it's going to do is it's going to put your website into a box called I help writers get unstuck. So the first thing I says, oh, that, that's actually good. That's actually better than what I see with a lot of people where actually they'll say home and I'll show you some, some website where it says home. At least it's descriptive of what you do. The, but the problem that I saw is that I don't believe that a lot of people are looking for that. See, they were looking for something else. So here's what I've done. I basically took that sentence and I put it into Google. And I said, I help yeah. writers get unstuck, which is the keyword. You've tell Google, this is what I want you to sort me at. And what I'm looking for right here, I'm looking for clues. So the first thing that I caught that I caught that caught my attention was writer's block. And I was like, huh, that is getting people unstuck is the result that they'll get out of you. But what people are looking for is writer's block. Um, and especially what I do. So I'm going to look at all the results here and what they're saying, the writing exercise that will get you unstuck every time getting unstuck. So there is some unstuck, but there's not a lot of results with that. It's 500,000, which is actually nothing in Google. And I'm going all the way at the bottom and this is the gold mine. This is what I want you to pay attention to because what Google is telling you, it's giving you the answer to your question is if my keyword or my tagline, what I think I do is that, what are people looking for that is related to that? And it's right there and writer's block Writer's block, writer's block, writer's block, writer's block, poetry, San Diego, poetry book. So writer's block is the keyword, right? So proof. Now I'm going to prove that if I go into my SEO tool and I say, tell me how many searches there is for I help writers get unstuck. The answer is a big old zero. So, sorry, we haven't found any data. And if I look for writer's block, which has 7.2 million results mm. for that and I go in Google, the result is 9,900. So almost 10,000 searches a month on average for writer's block. So the answer basically to go to make it a long story short here, your tab here should probably start something or should actually say writer's block because that is the keyword that is connected. So it could be a writer's blog coach or writer's blog consultant or writer's blog expert or writer's blog, all kinds of stuff where you, we can dig in there. And then you could say writer's blog, writer's blog expert, Colin, I help, I help huh. writers get unstuck. Right. So now it's like, OK, got it. So you, you still have your tagline. You got to think about your tagline. Is your tagline uh, helpful with Google? And we know that the answer is no. So I don't know that it has an enormous amount of value there. But at least if you start with writer's block, that is actually is going to now giving you some meat because basically Google is going to say, oh, OK, got it. Debbie Weil, writer's block. I, if someone's looking for that, I'm going to be able to serve them that. Does that make sense? So that's the first thing that I saw. So your Windows title up there, right? And we don't have time in 20, 30 minutes to go to the thing should have the word writer's block or something similar to that. Now, if I go in uh, Google, yeah, go ahead, to, go ahead. Does it need to be a sentence? A perfect uh, sentence? Like I help, I, or can I say writer's block expert? you know comma book coach comma i help writers get unstuck that would be perfect that would be that would okay. be that would be right. amazing it doesn't have to be a sentence it has okay. to make sense you want to think about in terms of you're talking to a computer which is what google is and it's trying to index what you have out there so i think yeah. that less is more and being really 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 accurate try to be as specific as you can be it's writer's block something. It's not just writer's block because writer's block is also like wooden block here, right? Like you can see yeah. like in Google's result, it's selling products and whatnot. So what is great here is if you put writer's block into Google, again, you scroll down all the way at the bottom 
And here is that, and it's right there for you, how to overcome writer's block. That actually is a blog you should have on your website. Or mm -hmm. five ways to overcome writer's block. Writer's block app, writer's block help, writer's block cure, writer's blog quotes, writer's blog definition, writer's blog meme. Let me talk to you about this because I think this is super, super, super important because Google is giving you the answer here, is giving you all the little, all the little words that are related around writer's block and it's saying people that are looking for writer's block are looking for that. So basically your entire website should include that because Google is going to be looking at that. It's going to say, okay, Debbie Weil, writer's block, but how to overcome writer's block, writer's block help, writer's block cure, writer's block's quote, uh, writer's block definition. You are using all those related searches that people are looking for. Therefore, you are highly, highly relevant. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to put you in position number one but at least you're helping Google make sense of what your website is about because it doesn't have any clue. It doesn't know. It's just Debbie Weil. I mean, especially your URL for you is DebbieWeil.com. That doesn't tell me anything. But it doesn't, you don't need your name in that title, that page title. I'm not I, sure why it's you could. It's not bad, but I would have it towards the end because it's less important than, I mean, if you're Oprah, yeah, you put your name from because it's like your name carries a lot of weight. But, you know, you're you're Debbie Weil and I'm Antoine DuPont and our name is not a recognized name. It's just, well, it's Debbie Weil. It's your name. So it doesn't have an enormous amount of value. So in terms of uh, where you put it, you put it at the end, not at the beginning. Right? Unless Maybe you want to build your... Uh, is there a limit to the number of uh, words yeah, there, there is a there is a limit, um, uh, a number of characters in the um, uh, in the title, and I believe it's seventy characters. Oh, I, okay. never, I never remember, but it's it's got you. You ask your SEO person, they'll know. I, I mean, I I um, I'll do the research. I'll tell you exactly. But there is a yeah, number of there's a number of characters that that Windows tab is designed to hold, and you don't want to have more than that. You want to make it fit in that. So obviously, it couldn't say, you know, how to overcome writer's blog, and uh, you know, I help writers and Debbie Vile. I mean, that would be too long. And I'll show you an example. Uh, actually, J Bear is a perfect example here. Um, so J Bear, it says J Bear Marketing and Customer Service Keynote Speaker. J Bear is the most the world's most impersonal, inspirational marketing. So it's just got too many words. It just doesn't fit in there, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, but but in in his case, actually, it's interesting because it says J Bear, marketing and customer service keynote speaker. So his mm -hmm. name carry weight because J Bear is a recognized name. People know that. So he puts that first. So he has earned the right to put that first. Same thing with Michael Port. Michael Port is a recognized name, so he wants to put that first. His name is as important as a keyword, right? But it's J Bear, and then it says, um, put my mouse over it, marketing and customer service keynote speaker. So if someone is looking for a customer service keynote speaker, a marketing keynote speaker, J Bear is going to come up. Right. So that's really what's important. That's what he wants to sell. That's what he wants to do. That's absolutely brilliant. Let me give you another example here. This guy and I don't know him and uh, and uh, I'm sure he's a very nice uh, gentleman. What's his name? Grant. Uh, Grant something. Grant uh, B um, is uh, his tab here. Look at that. It says home dash Grant Baldwin. So yeah. what he's missing out here, he is not communicating to Google, and that's a typical mistake, by the way. I see that on so many websites. He's not communicating to Google what he speaks about and what he wants to be a speaker. Find and book speaking gigs. You know, it's basically he has online training. Let me see a speaker lab, speaking, want to hire me to speak at your next event. I still don't know what he speaks about, right? So I'm looking at this, right, at this web page, want to learn how to find and book speaking gigs. So I guess he helps people find and book speaking gigs. That's his thing, his speaker's lab. Okay, now that makes sense. But it should be out there, right? Speakers, resource, speaker, um, you know, like it should say that because right now that's not really helpful. So I'm gonna close that. We got that in JBear. Uh, same thing here, and I was actually very surprised with Brand Fascination, which is how to fascinate. Uh, that's Sally Hawksfail. Look at that. It says homepage. Homepage dot dot dash Brand Fascination. Well, it's not, 
helping it, it's not i mean it's it, it happens to people that are just starting up and it happens to huge brand i'm not gonna say so i didn't want to put it up because i didn't want to make them look bad but i just saw a big speakers uh, thing and it was it it was not optimized up top so uh it, it's it's an honest mistake that a lot of people are doing uh it is very easily fixable okay so that was the what first about one all the other, what about all the other pages should you go to the same yes Every single page on your uh, on your uh, on your website should say so. Uh, and I'm going to cover uh, the, the 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 second thing here, which is you need to improve um, what is called your uh, your CTR. So it's the click through rate, right? So this tab here, this tab, and it says about Debbie uh, Debbie uh, while while sorry Debbie while. Um, here is what actually we're talking about here. That is what is going to be optimized. So you can see here, for example, this guy's got dot, dot, dot. That means that his Windows title is too long. See, there is some content beyond those writing tips. Yeah. So it's just not optimized. That's not a, that doesn't penalize you, but it's basically, it's not seen, right? As opposed yeah. to right now, coach, write and publish your book. That's just as clear as could be. Right? You can see it and whatnot. But what you should do here in writer's blog, and actually I put writer's blog coach. Let me take that out and just put writer's blog. What's interesting here is that you can see um, you can see how to overcome writer's blog, 14 tricks that work. Goins writer. I have no idea what Goins slash writer means. That's, that's his name. He's very, very well known. That's Jeff Goins. Okay, Goins. Okay, great. So Author, he's, blogger, yeah. I okay, know what that it. is. Okay, great. So his name carries weight. So this is why he has it in the Windows title. It's actually brilliant because someone's looking for Goins, they're going to find this. But what you can look at is that the the improving your CTR is in essence being as concise as possible or just being as um, targeted as you can uh, with this because this whatever it says here is going to determine whether someone clicks on it or not which is what I mean by improve the CTR, which is the click-through rate, um, you could actually change a few things that will make people click on your particular link uh, than it would on another one because the description, for example, let's look at this one here, how to beat writer's blog, writer's block, the New Yorker, Maria Konikova on how to overcome writer's block. It actually is... I mean, it's just really missing. Uh, there's a huge opportunity there that would improve the writer's blog. Here's what I would say. I would say, well, first of all, you're repeating what you just said above. So there's not a lot of value. Maria Konikova, maybe she's known, maybe she's not. I don't know. I'm not in the writer's world. So you would decide. So does that have any value? I would say this blog will teach you the four tricks from the top writers how to think so basically you're describing what i'm going to get out of this so that will be something if i'm looking at this one or that one i'm going to decide which one i'm going to click on remember people are not going to be clicking endlessly on it they're going to pick one two three and then they're going to move on they're going to look at something else so you, you have a quick opportunity so here's just trying to make it as appealing as possible for someone to click on your website especially when you're like you and i uh, uh where we're trying to get discovered we're, we're we're trying to get more visibility so we try to do everything we can to help ourselves does that make sense mm -hmm. okay cool so um, the Windows title, the description is also very important. It's a Windows description. Um, and then just you, you work on it and, and it doesn't have to be set in stone by you where you can actually test it for a month. See if you're getting, uh, you know, more, uh, more clicks on it and then, than you would when, when you say it differently. Uh, one of the great ways to, uh, to do it is to look at ad ads and where there is an ad at the top. Uh, because people that write ads are usually great at CTR because that's how they get people to click on their stuff, right? Does, does that, do, you, do you understand what I mean? It's like if I put like, uh, uh, let me put something, writer's blog, show my webcam, write, write writer's blog, cure. I don't know if there's going to be any ads there. No, there's no ads. Um, right, let me yeah, find. There used to be ads everywhere. I used to know a lot about this. Well, let me put marketing, right? Because I know that that's going to get a massive number of ads so look at that so the first two at the top here are ads 
right? Mm -hmm. So these people are paying money and they're paying very good money to be uh, up top. And the name of the game for them is to have more people click on their ads than the one above right so look at the difference market your business today five cents each plan a campaign free so you're looking at how they're building and the other one says number one marketing platform innovative marketing software i would say actually i'm thinking that the second one uh is probably a little bit more uh it's a little better written although this one has multiple links here that are actually they're all like number one so it's just like use the ads to kind of like help you how to build a great um, a great display with your Windows title and your description. These guys know it better than anyone else, so use them. Leverage their knowledge to improve yours, okay? All right, the next thing um, to... Uh, so you need to... To wrap up and then you ask me, do you need to do that for every single page? Is the answer is yes. Each and every single page on your website should be optimized using the exact same technique. The Windows title, the description, and then making sure they're using the LSI keyword in the text for that specific page. But the well, LS what? The LSI, those are the related keywords that we saw at the bottom. These ah. are, 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 are called LSI. So if you're looking for a specific keyword, all those words should be included in the text because you basically are saying all of this is consistent with, uh, mm -hmm. it's related to what I'm talking about. Okay. The, the the next thing which is you know important uh it's probably one of the most important thing is uh the blogs on your website um the blogs on your website um what i would do is i would look on generating uh, uh blog content that are focused around a single keyword um as opposed to just writing i mean i know as a writer you just want to write about something but uh you, there's probably some topics you want to talk about but i would certainly um have a writer's blog uh writer's block blog mm -hmm. on your website that is providing resourceful information mm -hmm. um some of these by the way are very i've had a website since 1995 some of these well, I'm calling them articles, their blog posts, are very old. And if you scroll down, mm -hmm. there's one on uh, corporate blogs. And I get so many hits on that. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it comes up. The big list of big brand corporate blogs. When I look at the Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. This is always the one that drives all the traffic. Does that have a page title? It actually says the big list of big brand corporate blogs, Debbie Weil. Big, but people must be, I mean, yeah, I mean, so, it's, it's a great, it's a great list. So oh, what I would do with this, um, I would certainly would leverage that. So by the way, you have tons of links, which is really, really great. Did you do that yourself or you had someone do it? I know. I did it huh? I wrote everything that's on this site over okay. many years. Oh, but but I know, I, yeah, you're a writer, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But I kept all this from, um, and my, uh, yeah, anyway. So you can add but, some stuff to a blog, by the way, you don't, you're not, you know, it's, it's a blog is, is something that you can go in there and it says, okay, what could I do to enhance that? Maybe you could add a video. Um, maybe you could add a, uh, another piece of content. You could add some graphics. You could add some updates. Uh, you could do some, you could add some stuff to it. Um, on, on the blog, especially if you have a blog that actually is driving a lot of traffic, you have a huge opportunity. Here, the opportunity for me is, you know, right there, um, you know, popular articles, return to articles, you have a search button. Yeah, I that's may, a, the, Yeah, the, I mean, look into an opportunity to, to brand, you know, uh, having a, um, um, you know, something selling your services, you know. Um, because you're providing, it's it's generating a great deal of uh, of traffic for you. But I would say, you know, we we are lucky once in a while to get a blog that actually generates an enormous amount of traffic. I know I have one on my website, which is someone about something about website survey, how to do a survey, and I'm like, I'm, I, it just it drives an enormous amount of traffic. But you have you leverage it that particular blog to actually generate, you know, uh, basically, you know promote some services that you're providing because this is this is a this is a, um, a a piece of content that is driving a lot of traffic but I would say that when you're writing a blog on your website um, you want to make sure that you're writing long form so you want to think in terms of how 
uh, can I be super helpful? Why, why can I do to provide some tips and resources for people to help them deal with whatever they're, they're dealing with? For you, it's everything's going to be around writer's blog. You know? Yeah, and you realize this is a little out of date because I don't do consulting anymore on co in corporate blogs, but I just have so much content I didn't want to get rid of it. Right. No, no, you don't want it. Especially what, what you want to do is, um, you know, for, for, for content that is old and has been there for a long time, uh, sometimes it's good to do an inventory and to remove, um, uh, yeah, remove all that. content. You know, that is actually what we call dead weight content. So you get rid of it because it's not helping you. And then you select the 10, 15, 20 blogs that are really generating the traffic and keep that. But get rid of the rest because they're actually are diluting the authority of your website. Uh, a blog that does not have uh, traffic does not uh, does not do anything uh, for you, okay? So um, the next thing that I'm actually seeing, which is actually great uh, for you, which I put in my notes, use external links uh, and use internal links. So, uh, for example, here you actually are linking to uh, to Twitter, you're linking to Facebook, you're linking to to YouTube. So when you're writing an article or a page, it's actually very helpful where you are and when you have links to sources that validates what you're saying. So if you are in a page where you're describing your services, I would have links to a Wikipedia uh, definition of writer's block. I would have a, a link to a CNN article or a Huffington Post article or whatever, whatever, um, media that you have out there that you could link to because Google is looking at this, but it has to relate. It has to be related to what you're talking about. So if you're, you know, talking about uh, SlideShare, this is great, you know, so SlideShare, there's a link, but uh, let's look at, uh, let's look at some opportunities that you have. So you don't want to overdo it. And I would say you want to have uh, what I call like a, 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 an average of I would say three to five links maximum uh, on uh, that are external links. So you already have one, two, three, four, five. So that's enough on this particular thing. Because if you overdo it, then it's just um, it's just not natural. It's distracting and whatnot. But I would say you know, like uh, CEO of big brands are still rare. Let me look the company shareholders. Yeah, I'm looking for uh, a keyword: large association, government, nonprofit blogs. If you take away. So there's not anything here, develop relationship. I don't see any big words or any reference to oh, social media strategy. There you go. Perfect. So that could yeah. be a great, a great thing that you are actually linking. You basically search for social media strategy, find an article that has an enormous amount of, uh, of traffic that is highly re um, relevant to what you're saying. And then you link to that. But again, don't overdo it. You know, just do four or five. And you want, and that's the most important people are missing, is you want to have links to your internal pages especially with this. So here is what I would do is like find a way to put the, the keyword writer's blog, writer's block in that page and link to your page that is selling the services writer's block. Does that make sense? Because yeah. you want to use that blog to link to an internal page selling the services. Now, you don't want to be, you don't want to like, um, it has to make sense. You know, mm -hmm. corporate blogs, if you see you're making a list of corporate blogs, you could talk about, you know, he says, you know, I'm, you know, as a, as a consultant or as a public speaker that speaks about writer's blog, I have, um, I have, I do read a lot of corporate blogs, right? So you want to put it in context that makes sense inside of what you're talking about. But that keyword linking to your page is really super important because you basically are linking that content, which is a good piece of content to a service that you're providing. And now that's helping you. Does that make sense? Do you get that? I do, except that I'm no longer doing that. So I got to think that through. But let me think about it. Right, you you're thinking that you got to thinking inside the context. I just I, I I just told you inside of a context of writer's block consulting, but that works for anything else you're doing, whatever you up to, whatever you're selling, whether you are. Um, uh, you know, a, uh, um, a fitness guru uh, or you're, you're a, a business coach consultant or whatever you are, this is where you want to actually have that blog that you, uh, that you wrote link to uh, a, a service page on your website. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. 
Okay, I got it. Interesting. Right. Um, so the, 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 the next thing, uh, it, which is important is, uh, and I don't remember what number we're on. I think we're on number five, um, of the things that I wanted to talk to you, at least that's in my list. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say we're at number five now. Okay. Uh, to use the, the, uh, the URL and the, uh, and the keyword. So what we mean by that is your, uh, URL is Debbie com forward slash speaking. Now, the issue with this is that it's way too vague speaking, right? Mm -hmm. Speaking about what? So your keyword here, your URL should actually say speaking dash about dash writers dash block. Mm -hmm. Don't overdo it. The shorter, the better. But, you know, I wouldn't want to, you could say speaking dash writers blog but i just i think that the about would actually help uh mm -hmm. but that is what it's about because now you're helping google make sense again with this the url is really important so speaking is not helping you you know so that's one of the things i look when i look at a client's website i'm going to be looking at this i'm going to look at you know for example about right so it should actually what davywild.com about um I don't know that would do anything there uh, because you everywhere. I mean, well, you know, if, that yeah, works. for example, if it was like your, the name of your company, Box, uh, what, what is the name of the company you had? Bo um, uh, Voxy Media, V-O-X-I-E Media. Yeah, Voxy Media. So I would say voxymedia.com forward slash about Debbie Weil. That's what I would do because now about would not be sufficient. It would be too vague. It's about what? It's about mechanics. It's about airplanes. Like it doesn't say what it's about. So if you say about Debbie Weil, now it's says, oh, okay, it's about Debbie Weil. You're just basically helping. Think about it in terms of helping Google, um, uh, um, you know, make sense of that. So it's the same thing here. If I'm going to click on work with me uh, forward slash workshops and retreats. Again, it doesn't say what kind of workshops it is. It doesn't say what kind of retreats in the URL here. So you want to say like what type of retreats it is. So you want to find a way in your URL to be more descriptive, to help Google make sense of that. Does that make sense? So it's just a little yeah. tip. It's just one thing you have to tweak in your SEO that is going to take it, you know, and, uh, and make it uh, that much better. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about, which is the number six, uh, is to use a lot of multimedia, uh, especially uh, videos. And I've seen that you have videos on your website, and that's a great thing. Um, and I'm going to scroll down, and I think your video is right there. Uh, so this is really, really good. Um, uh, people don't do enough of that. So obviously, you are a public speaker, and you've been doing that for uh, for a while. If I go into all your pages, you have a video here. You've been features and that. That is really, really good. Uh, if I go in about, I hope there is a video there of you again, and I believe yeah. there is. Yeah. There is you. There's a great picture. Yeah, there's a great opportunity for a video here. That would be a recommendation that I would have. Uh, and yeah. the reason why I think that you should have multimedia like videos is because it improves the stickiness of your web page. One of the signal uh, signals that uh, Google is looking for is uh, how long people are staying on your uh, on your web page. The shorter mm -hmm. amount of time they're spending, uh, the least interesting it is. So it's going to be, it's a popularity contest, right? Are people spending, spending two minutes on Debbie Wiles' uh, 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 specific page about writer's blog, uh, and then they're spending 30 seconds on this one because that page is utterly boring on someone else's website. There's really not much of content to, to think about. So it's just going to give you more authority. So how do you give your page more authority? Well, try to keep people as long as possible on your web page. How do you do that? Well, give them a, a, a video to watch. Uh, and if they, there is a video, so by the way, they're not going to watch a 20 minute video, but if you have like a two, three, four minute video, people are going to watch that. And then all of a sudden they spend four minutes on your video. You just added that. So what do you add? Add multimedia, add graphics, add case studies, add, um, charts, you know, of, of any kind of things that you have to make your page interesting. Just add content on your page. That's going to have people. Uh, stay as long as possible and, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell you know obviously 
uh, SEO is we could be talking all day long about all the things you could be doing. Um, you, usually when we optimize, just to give you a, a, a sense, when we optimize a website for a client, we take about 12 to 15 hours worth of work on it. Uh, between all the analysis that we have to do, then going and tweaking each and every single page and each and every single URL and making sure we're uh, collecting the videos and putting them on the landing page and whatnot. That's just about uh, how much time we're, uh, we're spending. So we could go on uh, for a, a long, long time talking about all of this. But, you know, if you do those things as a, uh, as a speaker, as a writer, as a consultant, and look at those things and t it starts to tweak everything that we've talked about in this video, uh, that is going to help you tremendously, uh, uh, you know, getting, you know, better visibility with Google and, and help Google, you know, make sense of what your website is about. Interesting. So did, is your head spinning already? Did I put you in a coma? No, interestingly, it's not spinning. I go so far back that I used to actually write newsletters about some of this stuff. But the 12 to 15 hours, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think I personally could spend that much time doing this. So I'm, no. I'm trying to think I, of the most important things I can change. But I, but I, no, I great points, great points all about the page titles and the, uh, the URLs and adding yeah. the videos and the internal links. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, you know, the just... great things to keep in mind. And as I go, to, certainly as I go forward, and I, I, don't, I mean, I just can't update, you know, hundreds of blog posts, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, so, I, I, you, you can't do that. I mean, it's it, it's mind boggling. And by the way, what I'm talking about here does not um, does not um, change the fact that as a speaker and for what you're doing, um, a lot of the networking and uh, and connections with other people is going to go a long way. I believe this is a very high level uh, type of uh, services that you're that you're providing, mm -hmm. which a lot of it is going to come from uh, referrals and friends are referring. So this what I'm talking to you is not going to um, really transform your business. And all of a sudden your phone is going to ring off the hook because you've done those things. But it's really uh, helping you get better visibility in what you're about. I mean, it, it just could take, you know, one or two person to notice you. Uh, you know, three, six months down the road and saying, wow, that's interesting. Like, look, at she's got a great article. And all of a sudden you made a connection that you wouldn't have otherwise if you had done that. It's not going to transform your business. You know, as a public speaker, I believe that a lot of it has to do with your networking ability uh, mm -hmm. and the high level consulting uh, uh, jobs mo come from that. But I think it would be um, it would help you if you're very a lot more uh, relevant and have a lot more authority around that domain on the internet when someone is considering hiring you. You know, they're going to be looking at you. They're going to say, well, should I hire her, Debbie Weil? And then all of a sudden they're looking for things relating to writer's block. And then your article comes up, you know, in a top five article. It's going to have credibility. Yeah, it's going to look like and all you've done is you just SEO'd it and then boom, you're showing up. So that's really what this is about. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm with you. All right, I believe cool. you. So, Debbie, thank you so much for uh, spending the time. I hope I provided uh, value to you. Um, you know, my concern is when I talk about SEO is I know that I can see the the deer in the headlights and people going into a coma. So, I hope I. I I gave you enough information without having your, your head spinning too, uh, too bad. Uh, and I appreciate your time. I, I appreciate you spending the time with me and, and, and providing uh, help to people that are out there like you, um, you know, trying to make sense of SEO and helping their visibility. And whatnot. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, very helpful. All right, cool. Thank you.